It looks pretty clean up here, but I want to check for third wire. In Switzerland, the investigators start their security sweep with the phones. No infinities. Everything looks all right. I tell you what, we better run a TDR up the hill, though. See if anything's hanging on the line. What do you think about, uh, well, what can we do with the people? We've got to do something. There's two things we've got to do with them. One is we've got to get them to change the patterns, primarily Billy. Change their movements, change their patterns. Second thing we've got to do is we'll have to indoctrinate them on security. Probably set up a night watch situation of some kind. They have enough weapons here where they carry weapons, oh, yeah. flashlight, walkie-talkie? Carry the whole thing. Patrol the grounds at night. New additions to the farmyard since their last visit include a pair of peacocks whose raucous squawks make them as effective guards as the farm geese. There are new photos too and more film. In some, the beamship hovers by a tree. Maya says they use trees as a kind of magnetic ground. Two or more ships in the same shot are almost unheard of in UFO photos. Maya has dozens of such pictures. Ships below a horizon line, such as a hill, are even rarer. In this photo, a Variation 2 ship controls a smaller, unmanned drone ship, designated as Variation 5. In one demonstration, a Variation 3 ship exhibits a behavior Stevens has seen before. We have often reported a nipping flight. We also have a wobbling flight, where it wobbles around a vertical axis. The bobbing effect, Meyer explains, is due to the ship riding the waves of the Earth's magnetic field, much as a boat on the ocean. When Maya is about to have a contact, he receives a cooling sensation on his forehead. The communication is telepathic. He prepares carefully. He is usually taken aboard the beam ships, but is unable to describe their interiors very well. There are no words, he says. Apparently, they are totally unfamiliar. The gun is a precaution due to the threats on his life. The hat is a favorite, one he picked up on his travels in the Middle East. The tattoo he received during a brief stint as a sailor. He dresses well because he can be gone for hours and the weather in these mountains changes constantly. The walkie-talkie is a necessity because he is often left far from where he parked the bike and must call to be picked up. Maya feels the Pleiadians can communicate with him because his vibrations, the natural frequencies of his mind, are compatible with theirs. Each human on Earth and each human over the whole universe has uh, different vibrations. The vibrations of human is made out of his thinking and the vibration themselves, they are something like magnetic electrical waves. And they are turning from human to human, from planet to planet, and over the whole space of the universe. When entering your terrestrial state, we must make an adjustment in our vibrational patterns. It is similar to your adjusting the fine-tuning on your communications devices. In our case, it allows for the clear perception necessary for an exchange to take place. You see, this around this area where I took several rolls of films. Mm -hmm. And this picture here, yeah, I took this. over there. Uh -huh. What size uh, is that ship, Billy? Really? They told me it's seven meters. One of the most frequent spots for the contacts is Obersadeleg, 
a wide valley just 10 minutes from the farm at Schmidruti. Here, Meyer took one of his most spectacular series of photographs. Between both roads. And you can see here these lighted trees here. Mm -hmm. That's Same. there up. And here on the left side, this hill, what's happened there behind. Yeah. And the trees here down, it's yes. that one there. Yeah. Okay, then is this where this coming? Uh, this picture I took there, if you go left side a little bit, here, if you go down, like this way here. The beam ship stayed in the area for almost 20 minutes, flying slowly, often skimming the treetops, sometimes just hovering yeah. in place. And the ship was a little behind them when I took this picture. And just now the trees are growing up in the last months. They are about one and a half or two meter higher mm -hmm. than at the time when I took this picture. And then where did it move? It uh, left that place yeah. to the left side. Something like this. Yeah. Like this. And then it was moving over there. You see here the small tree where it's happened there. And this one that's that there. Did it come across in front of the trees like this? Yes, yes. And you can see there behind left side of this one, this mm -hmm. tree, the higher one there. Yeah. And after this picture, I got the other one uh -huh. to that position there. For the rover? Yeah. Wait a minute, I think we got another one in here now. It's yeah. The one in between but there, right? I had to go back a little bit mm -hmm. there down. And oh. from there, I took the picture. That's the tree. There down what you can see. The investigators are impressed by the vastness of the valley. The steep drops and the obvious difficulty of hanging models from anywhere to fake the pictures. The stunning clarity of the pictures and the accessibility of the site gives the investigators the chance to put the photos through another test. Billy, this, uh, we're using this to measure distance. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the latest in infrared measuring devices. Yes. It's actually a small computer. Mm -hmm. It's made by Wild Herbrook here in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. And what we're trying to do here, Lee is up there with the reflector. Yep. And what this will do is send infrared light out mm -hmm. and reflect out of that reflector back here. And this will rapidly tell us the distance and will also tell us how much higher or lower he is. That's about where you're standing, right there. Mm -hmm. That's right, the place, yes. Okay, we'll go to... On systems, yes, we've got 1,262 feet, 0.85. The precise measurements and photos are fed into the computer. The edges of known objects, such as the trees and the hills, are translated into pixels. Since these measurements are known, the number of pixels in the edge of the unknown object, the craft, gives its distance. The beam ship is determined to be just where Meyer said it was. Simple triangulation then gives it size. Seven meters, or about 21 feet in diameter. Billy, how many sightings By now, the investigators have made over a dozen trips to Switzerland. The case takes up more and more of their time and taxes their ingenuity. Each test leads to another, and every result is double and triple checked. To test the possibility that the Maya photographs were made using small-scale models suspended by transparent monofilament, the investigators bring with them a detailed model of a beam ship they identify as Variation 2. While Welsh flies the model on a hilltop above the farmhouse, Maya and Stephen snap several rolls of film. The camera Maya is using is the same one with which he took all the other pictures. The results are impressive. To the naked eye, some of the photos appear genuine. Those photographs, they're interesting. They look yeah. pretty good. Pretty you know, good. I saw one difference in them, and that was that those models look white. They don't reflect that silver gleam like the pictures that Billy had. You want to look at the focus in them? Hey, hi, guys. What's uh, hey, hey, talking about? <clears throat> the pictures. The yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Some of them looked... Pretty bad, but uh, some of them look pretty good. I think we ought to test them. The pictures of the model are not all that good. If you've, in the pictures where he focused on the model, the horizon is out of focus. Where he focused on the horizon, the model is out. 
Well, not all of them, Steve. I mean, some of these no, photographs come 